The Faust device is known as many things. It lit the beacon that summoned the Tyrannids to the 40k galaxy. It's some sort of variation on the Astronomicon. But what are its actual abilities? What powers it, for example? What's its grander purpose? Can it be more than a second string Astronomicon? Why did the Necrons build it? And how many more examples of it are there across the galaxy? And why does it restore people's memories? Friends, let's find out and welcome to another 40k video where we will be drawing on the great work of Belisarius Call. One way it differs from the Master of Mankind's controlled projection. The Astronomicon is the battery in this thing. It's a Necron Shard, several in fact. From inside, a tall metal mechanoid being stared out with a single glass eye is one quote that describes that from the book. The being was shut down as well as suspended in time, but it gave off an air of awareness even so. Cole put his face up close to the glass. It is deeply fascinating. I had accounted for the possibility of transwarp capabilities of the device, but even so, he shook his head in admiration. Such art. I have achieved long-range preliminary interface. In return, the mountain is bringing the past back to life. He turned away from his guest and clattered on. If you consider most of my memories are hidden from me, lost for all time, but the past still exists in absolute terms. Time is a river. The mouth and source are there, even if you cannot see them. Incredible that the quantum empathy of the device should be able to effortlessly tune my energetic state to be able to receive past emanations of my waveform, all without recourse to the Empyrean. He held up a finger tipped to the three-pronged data robe. We have so much to learn from them, such pure science, such mastery of the material. So, to add a little commentary on that one, one of the unusual aspects of the Pharos is its effect on the mind. And we get a specific note here that it draws on quantum empathy rather than the warp to do this. The Necrons used quantum technology, which is basically hacking into and exploiting the laws of physics, to provide quantum empathy to change the subject's energetic state. So it connects that person with their past, so that they can relive past memories. Now why would the Necrons want this? My answer is think back to the history of the Necrons, with their former gods, now in slave shards. The biotransference the Necrons were tricked into caused issues with their memories, Particularly after their sleep, we see beings with a loss of part of themselves. Could the first device aid the Necrons with this? Call back and restore memories and moments they might otherwise have lost? So why is this device being restored now? Noctilith is perhaps the greatest work of the Necrons, Call says. During this war of theirs, the war was used as a weapon by their enemies, the fathers of the Eldari, the Old Ones. So the old ones may not be of the warp, but they still draw on the warp as a weapon. The Necrons found a way to fight back against it. And the book tells us QV087 gave Cole a patient look. Hypothesis as to Xenos machine spirit reactivation. For the record, the cruel nib scratched over the screen. The rift must have something to do with it. As observed elsewhere in the similar installation, said Cole, business like a gate. Critical bass of Reawakening was reached some time ago in other dynastic territories. So I suspect destruction of Imperial presence on Sotha was the catalyst here. Hypothesis This device has been biding its time. Self repair, said Cole. Re establishment of function. Reconstitution of machinery. Its ultimate goal is the reopening of the beacon and re establishment of super luminal network in Ultima Segmentum. And it looks like a stellar cartograph said Felix, who in this letter quote is with Cole. Look, this is Sotha. I am sure of it. A ball of light occupies Sotha's position at the centre of the map. It glowed with increasing potency as the map continued to spread, the galaxy unrolled by points of light. Billions and billions of them. Every star in the galaxy, said Primus. This information will be incredibly valuable to Cole, said Felix. There are more of these nexus points. More pharises. Hundreds of them. A network of beacons appeared in the galaxy, each one large and bright. I just wind back to a little part of the early quote. QV087 in his conversation with Carl says that the old ones used the warp as a weapon. Therefore that explains 
where there is noctilith or black stone, which can dampen or enhance the power called in the warp. A network of them across the galaxy could block out the power of the old ones. So this device seems to be part of a larger effort to restore its connection with others of its kind. Now we're on to this other question. Why did the Necrons build this and other similar devices? I think it was a way for them to transport instantly from one place to another, like the Eldara did using the webway to take away that advantage from the Eldari. So I think it was a counter move of the Necrons to be able to move and counter the forces of the Eldari wherever they appeared. That tying in, of course, with the counter of taking away the power of the old ones drawing on the warp, and of course it would also take away the power from the Eldar. So the Eldar wouldn't be able to draw on the powers of the warp, nor would they be able to surprise the Necrons, because if they did, there would be some Necrons to counter that move. They're in short order. And speaking of the war, let's get back to Belisarius' call. Just a moment, Decimus, said Call. Point one. This is not a tomb world. Points the second. Although this is a Necron facility, ultimately it is the work of something older even than they. Very well. Here is plain history, said Call, plainly delivered. There was long ago a war in heaven, so the Eldari called it, and though it happened long before mankind evolved, and before the Eldari dominated the stars, it remains prominent in their myths. From what I have pieced together from not always willing informants, the Necrons won this war. But in doing so, their power was broken. They went to sleep, as we are all painfully aware, and they are now waking up. This mountain has stood here since their days of greatness. Consider its shape, consider its coating of basalt. Over the eons, it must have been submerged under water, it must have been part of the seabed, and covered by volcanic eruption. Throughout this world's geological history, it has moved and shifted with the crawl of tectonic plates, yet it has always been adapting always working. What is it, said Felix? You should tell us that also plainly. It is a quantum empathic resonance beacon, said Cole. The Necrons are masters of this physical realm. Their understanding of matter and the nature of the material is so profound they can accomplish miracles that other races must rely upon the warp to achieve. I have come to believe that their ability to travel faster than light and communicate over interstellar distances, which is something that it can do the device, but I've not really touched upon it greatly in this video, must have been de dependent on networks of beacons like Mount Pharos. Exactly how, I'm not sure, but I suspect that the centre of every one is an entangled supermass of isolated particles, perfectly in tune with others of their kind scattered across the galaxy. They're strangely tangles and powerful, not only do they influence each other, allowing instant transmission of data, the data being people or communication, but they can also alter the sympathetic frequencies of the other particles near to them, aligning them with their other entangles with targeted, predictable effects. Explain more clearly, said Felix. This machine exploits the fundamental laws of physics to connect multiple parts of reality together. With no need of the warp, that is the simplest way I can express it. So perhaps there's a little to do with time there. When someone's been transported, perhaps it makes up for the time by putting it there instantly, but I can only speculate on that. They bypass the warp, and this network likely let them move anywhere, perhaps even certain dimensions, for example. Could the forest device have helped the Necrons capture the Satan in their vaults? That's an interesting idea. Because the vaults that the Catan are in are pocket dimensions. Could they have been transported there using these devices? We can only speculate. So that covers the device's abilities. Quite a lot of speculation for me, quite enjoyed that. The device can do the following. It can communicate across great distances, perhaps even across dimensions. It can store memory and it can transport physical beings as well. So definitely an upgrade from the Astronomicon. So now friends, I turn things over to you. Please let me know what you think of the thoughts. Any high hypotheses of your own, comment down below.